Hey everybody, welcome back to Boat Fool Sailing. Thanks for tuning in. So I am out on the water office today because, well, ever since we almost killed the engine, uh, I've been feeling a little bit anxious about the old gal. And plus we've had some strong northeasterlies and I wanted to check on our chafing gear, but all is well. Uh, so anyway, I just got the newest edition of Sail Magazine, and as most of you know by now, I am sick and tired of the boat designs that they uh, showcase in this rag. I will say, uh, the one exception in this um, month's issue is the story on the Duracell project. Now, if you haven't been following them on YouTube, I highly recommend it. They're great. Plus, if you haven't yet seen the Mike Plant story of uh, Coyote, uh, titled Coyote, I should say, I highly recommend it. Um, it's as fascinating as it is tragic, and I think you can see it either on Amazon or Netflix. I can't remember which, but I've seen it a couple of times. It's really fascinating, but it'll give you the backstory on the Duracell boat. Um, so, the top 10 uh, uh, boats nominated for the 2024 Best Boat of the Year uh, list, uh, they're all hideous. In fact, on page two of them, and I'll post it up, um, as you can see here, they all basically look like million dollar track houses. They all look identical with the exception of one, which is a catamaran. Otherwise, they're all virtually the same looking. They all have ports maybe in a different place or a different cove stripe or boot stripe, but basically they all look identical and it's just a shame. But the kicker was this review of the DeFore 41 and uh, they added a new design element in the galley. I don't know if you can see that here, but basically you have to walk around this little nubble to get from your sink to your stove every time you want to go do something. For example, you want to strain your pasta in the strainer. You've got to leave the stove and walk around that nubble uh, and over to your sink. Or you want to add some water to your pan. Same thing, right? What a ridiculous design element. I mean, how many times are you going to forget that's there and you're going to turn around and smack crank your junk right into the side of that thing. It's really a poor design choice. And whatever happened to the galley where you're going to feel sort of secure in there if you're underway? Certainly not that one. Uh, in any event, it's absurd. And the boat's absurdly expensive. And it's touted as a cruiser, but I think its comfort ratio is like a 23. Absurd. But uh, that brings me to my point, which is these boats all are catered to the 1% of sailors. That's not who we are at Boat Fools. Uh, you know, we are the everyman of sailing. We buy used boats because that's what we can afford. And it brings me to my point, which is I did a piece on my friend Cape Dory Carlton a couple of weeks ago um, about him and his uh, Cape Dory 30. And I asked him at the end of the piece, hey, Carlton, what did you pay for that boat? And he said, seven years ago, I paid $9,000 for it. $9,000. And all he has done, per his own admission, is buy a new Dodger in that time, with the exception of doing the general maintenance, which is changing your fuel and oil filters, uh, painting the bottom of your boat, waxing and buffing the hull, and maybe updating your bright work. Those things are just general maintenance, like owning a car. It's like changing your brake pads, or changing your oil, or getting new tires. Things you have to do in order to maintain the vehicle. Same thing with the boat. It does not have to cost a fortune. And Cape Dory Carlton is proof positive. You don't have to spend a fortune to go sailing because he has booked, as he told me the other night, 17 nights out at sea this summer and like 35 days of sailing. He sails every afternoon, right? So it got me to thinking, can you find a nice boat for less than $10,000 in New England for uh, overnighting, for weekending, for coastal cruising, for racing or for whatever, for day sailing? The answer, yeah, let's go take a look. Here we go. Look, the sailing season is slip sliding away and there are deals to be had. So coming in at number 10 this week, located in Portland, Maine, is a 1978 Sea Sprite 23 foot weekender complete with a dual axle trailer. List price of $4,950. So if you want to do some day sailing, maybe an overnight, uh, this boat would be a great boat to have. Plus, you can trailer it to your home. You don't have to pay a yard fee to store your boat. Okay, so uh, tan bark sails. It includes a Mercury 5 horsepower outboard engine with about 30 hours on it. Uh, it's only been used for three seasons to get on and off the dock. Uh, the boat also comes complete with dock lines, fenders, GPS, depth sounder, and compass. Uh, the boat is in the water and the slip is paid for until October, which means you've got about a week or so left. Uh, an easy boat to maintain, uh, only varnished is on the tiller handle. 
Uh, boat is in okay condition and can be sailed away from the dock with confidence. Uh, all right, a pretty boat. These uh, sea sprites have pretty lines and this one is no exception. Uh, there's your dual axle trailer. Uh, you can see that the boat could probably use some uh, buff and polish on the hull. There's your entry. Uh, your engine. Uh, here is your cockpit, which looks nice. Your teak you could use some varnish or leave it natural like it is. Um, nice looking tiller. Uh, just a nice looking boat, clean lines. And again, if you want to just have a weekender, an easy boat to maintain and just want to get on the water for those zen moments, this boat would be for you. Particularly if you're in the Maine, New Hampshire area, this boat would be easy to come and get. Let's look at the sailboat data. Okay. Um, uh, nice shear on this, pretty lines, full keel with a uh, keel attached rudder. And, uh, you know, first built in 19, 1958, designed by, of course, Carl Alberg. Beautiful boat. Sailor displacement of 17.7, uh, comfort ratio of 21 uh, and change, and capsizing screen of under 2 and an S factor of 1.46. Uh, so, relative to boats at size, it's going to be a sprightly, no pun intended, uh, boat to sail. And it'll be entertaining and fun and a beautiful, comfortable boat to sail around the harbor and the coast and to maybe go out to an island for a picnic. I love it. She is number 10 this week. Okay. Coming in at number nine, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a 1967 Holland built Blue Water Sloop uh, built by uh, Baron von Huevel. Huevel? in uh, the Netherlands. Now, only about 120 of these were built. It's 30 feet long, eight feet wide, with a four foot draft uh, and has a, a displacement of 8,000 pounds dry. Um, and it's a deck step mass. Now, there's not a lot of information on this boat. I can't find anything about it specifically. There's no uh, model boat number, uh, boat name for this. So it's really hard to pinpoint it, but it might be an SBAT. Um, but in any event, full keel, um, keel hung rudder, protected prop, which is nice. Fiberglass. Uh, here you've got a manual windlass. I've got the same one that's probably a Neptune. Um, really, really cool, interesting looking boat. And I put it in here because she's located in Maine for $9,900. And I think you could get it for less. It's got a, uh, a little uh, stove on here. And I like the uniqueness of this boat. And it looks like it's going to require a little attention, but it's got a new head, uh, six foot headroom in the main cabin. Um, the berths are, uh, it's got four berths and the cockpit length is uh, just over six feet at six feet, four inches. Um, you've got two new house and two new engine batteries, voltmeter and deck solar charger, 36 cabinets on board. That's a weird stat. Deep, deep ice box in the galley, propane stove, top and oven, stainless steel sink with foot pump, four cent cabin heater, mahogany antique interior, full bilge access. You've got a BMW marine diesel engine with 1130 hours in good running condition for it and reverse. Uh, there's also a spare engine and, um, Let's see, three deep uh, lazarettes. You got 120% uh, roller furling Genoa and a mainsail, 11 sails total with a spinnaker and pole, drifter, storm jib, two spare mainsails, three spare jibs, five stands, new bottom paint, sailed last season. Let's look more in the pictures. Okay, just a unique, cool boat. So I think if you're a DIY kind of sailor and want to put some elbow grease into something and some sweat equity, this would be a really cool boat to check out. I do love the interior. Uh, I'm not sure about the cushions, where they are, if they're included or if they need to be made, but um, really quite a unique boat. There's your BMW engine. And I kind of like its ugly duckling looks. And I think uh, with some, like I said, sweat equity and elbow grease, you could really turn this into a head turner. So she is number nine this week at $9,900, located in Eastport, Maine. And uh, she's been on the market for a little bit, so I bet you could get a deal on this. Okay, coming in at number eight, for those of you who like to race and are down in Massachusetts, here is an S2 9.1 Special Edition 1987 hull uh, listed in Boston, Mass for $8,000. It's being sold because the owner is moving to California and doesn't want to take the boat with her. It's in, noted to be in good condition, set up for racing, um, and uh, it's loaded with stuff. Okay, including seven sails, mains, uh, head sails, and spinnakers, two, uh, 2017 carbon tri radial main, 2017 uh, Dacron blade, 100% uh, with battens in sausage bag, 2018 carbon double taffeta tri radial 
140 uh, and on and on. Older symmetrical runner, older symmetrical reacher, old and older carbon main. You've got Harkin jib cars, Harkin uh, traveler, Harkin main sheet, six to one purchase on that. Harkin 44 winches. Um, it's got all the U.S. Coast Guard safety equipment. You've got a, a 1992 uh, rebuilt inboard Yamar, and um, and the outboard was replaced with a, a 1992 Yanmar. So it's got an internal uh, diesel engine now and new batteries, Bluetooth stereo, on and on and on. Um, you've got winter storage through June 2024, and that can be arranged uh, at the buyer's cost, but it has indoor uh, winter storage, I believe. Um, so let's look at the pictures. This is really decked out for racing. It's a special special edition. Um, not many of these were made, and uh, these boats are fast. It looks extremely overpowered right here, uh, so they need to shorten sail. But tiller steering, uh, cockpit traveler, but the gel coat looks to be in nice shape when I'm looking at this. Uh, there's your pile of sails that come with it. Uh, here are your Harkin 44 winches. Um, this boat would be a blast to sail. These S2s are fast, so let's look at the uh, sailboat data on these. Okay, um, this is the special edition, first built in 1983, and uh, you've got a sail area displacement of almost 21, so a quick boat, a comfort ratio of uh, about 19, which is under 20, which means it's a light displacement racing boat, hence the light displacement of 196 on this. Capsizing screening of over two, which isn't surprising, and an S factor, speed factor of 3.18. So relative to boats at size, it's gonna be quick, and you can tear up the race course on this boat. So uh, a neat boat, there's no uh, floor plans uh, or um, schematics for you to look at, but a neat boat, uh, she is number eight this week. And at that price of uh, $8,000, you could be on the water and racing uh, next week. Okay, coming in at number seven is a Watkins 30 foot uh, sloop, list price of $8,000, located in Quincy, Mass., posted about three weeks ago. Not a lot of information on this boat. However, uh, we do know that it is a fin with rudder on skeg and masthead sloop, displacement of 8,800 pounds, uh, max draft of only four feet, construction is fiberglass, um, uh, built by Watkins Yachts. So uh, she's a 1988, and the reason I put her on here is because these photos were taken June 25th, 2023, so just a couple of months ago. So uh, truth in advertising, right? So this does look like it has a bimini of sorts, although it's not up. You've got a nice dodger here. You've got some netting if you've got a child or a pet. You've got lazy jacks, roller furling, uh, a nice looking boat. You've got a, a quasi sugar scoop here with a transom hung ladder, which is always nice to have. Life sling, which is cool. And uh, you know, this boat looks clean on the inside. It looks like it's been used by maybe a family. And I just, it's got simple lines. It's not bad looking. The, uh, uh, the hatches look great. Everything looks kind of nice and neat and tidy on this boat. And what is the selling point for me is these pictures are time stamped and dated. So, you know, we're not looking at something from a decade ago. Uh, these boats are solid little coastal cruisers and this one is no exception and just blasting through these again i like the looks of this boat uh very simple very uh sort of traditional uh 80s looking boat and uh, let's look at the sailboat data so we get a sense of this thing so here's your layout head galley can sleep one two three four five maybe six people could probably sleep uh, made out of fiberglass we'll get the deck material uh, last built in 1988 60 of these were made built in the usa you've got a beam of 10 feet just over 10 feet and uh, length overall of 28.92, length on water of 24, so only a differential of uh, four feet, almost five feet, so not too bad. Um, Yanmar diesel on this holds 40 gallons of water, sailor displacement nearly 14, and uh, she's a, a heavy displacement at 284, comfort ratio of nearly 24, capsizing screening of two, and a speed factor, S factor of 1.6. So uh, relative to boats or size, not the quickest boat out there, but you're not buying this to race. You're buying this to coastal cruise and do some day sailing and weekending, just having fun out there. And the price point of $8,000 uh, is really, really good. 1,300 hours on that Yanmar. And again, I think given the time of the season right now, you could get this for a steal, maybe five, six thousand dollars. Make an offer. These are really cool boats, uh, and this would be a nice steady boat to have your family on, uh, and noted to be in good condition.
All right, let's move on to number uh, six this week. Number six this week is a Pearson 10 meter, which means 33 feet, located in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. List price of $8,500, length overall of 33 feet. Uh, last, uh, this one was built in 1977. And it's got a universal 30 horsepower diesel, which runs great. Sales are in okay condition. Uh, you've got 100 and 130% uh, Genoa. Uh, main sales in good condition. Solid boat. Uh, need gone ASAP. Make an offer. Boat will be on mooring for the rest of the season. Okay, so if you're down in the New Bedford, Fairhaven area, this boat might be for you. You've got a nice bimini. Uh, you've got a nice sail cover, roller furling. And this boat just looks clean. And these Pearsons are fast, fun boats, and they're very stable. You got a stern hunt ladder, which is nice. And uh, here she is under sail. That looks like maybe you're 100% Genoa. I can't tell. Um, but the decks look good. You got wheel steering. You've got uh, a traveler in your cockpit, which I like now. I wasn't a fan at first, but now I am. Uh, but just a nice looking boat, nice lines on her. And 33 feet. And look at this uh, little dinette table in your cockpit that you can set up. And you've got, oh, it looks like auto helm here too. Uh, and looks like newer electronics. But that's just a nice touch. Obviously, this person cared very much for this boat. And uh, and it shows in the cleanliness of it. It's neat as a pin down below. It looks like it maybe comes with a TV, uh, keel step mass, which is nice, and uh, a very easy boat to maintain and sail. Nice head in there. It looks nice and clean. There's your main salon looking back towards the galley with a centerline sink. Not bad. Uh, and it just looks neat and tidy. It looks like it's been used and loved. And I think, um, all right, look at that. It comes with jack stands too. Nice uh, full uh, gimbaled stove there. And uh, this is a sort of a winner, winner, chicken dinner kind of boat. I love this boat. Um, let's look at the sailboat data on this. Um, Atomic 4 gas engine, though I feel like uh, that's not the case with the subject, which has a 30 horsepower diesel. So ignore the sailboat data on this. Uh, sail air displacement of 16. Uh, she is a moderate displacement of 244. Comfort ratio of nearly 27. So a pretty comfortable boat. Capsizing screening of under 2 and an S slash speed factor of 2.1. So relative to similar boats, she's going to be okay. Uh, and it's, gonna, it's a Bill Shaw design. And uh, uh, 230 of these were made. So it's a very popular boat. It does have a balsa cord deck, but... As we know now, about 90% of all boats have balsa cord deck. It's not the end of the world. Just get a good survey. Okay, so she is number six this week. Oh, oh, wait, here are your schematics. Uh, so your head, one, two, three, four, five. You could sleep easily six on this. Handsome boat. Uh, this one is wheel steering, not tiller. Uh, the subject is, and I would take a close look at that because at $8,500, uh, you could be off and sailing and having the time of your life. All right. Ladies and gents, coming at number five this week is a 1981 Sabre 28-2 located in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. List price of $5,000, listed about three weeks ago. Uh, this one was built, uh, like I said, in 1981, noted to be in good condition. Overall, it's got a newer Yanmar um, put in by the previous owner. There's not a lot of information, though. There is an autopilot, GPS, and VHF, but let's look at the picture. Here's your head. Uh, this looks like it's fine. Um, I'm not sure what this setup is, but uh, maybe they're getting wetter, ready to winterize it. But uh, the hull looks clean and nice. The down below looks fine. Uh, there are a number of Sabre 28s out there right now. And this one um, struck my fancy just because it doesn't look like it's been, you know, uh, bastardized at all, all original. You got auto helm. There it is. And uh, there's your traveler back there on your transom. Uh, you do have a ladder off the stern. And uh, it just looked like... Um, I wish I could see what year this was installed. I can't read it, but there's your Yanmar. And uh, it looks like it's a nice example of the Sabre 28-2. And I can't say enough about the these boats. They are seaworthy. They are nice. Uh, they are stable. They are well-built and they're built in Maine. So maybe I have a prejudice for them, but uh, these boats, there's your door that's closed up into your V-berth and head area. So it shows that the door closed is not all warped, but um, just a nice little boat. And that price of $5,000 and noted to be in good condition, uh, I would uh, run, not walk to take a closer look at this boat. Uh, I love these Sabres. You can't go wrong with them. And uh, she's number five. But before we go, let's look at the sailboat data, even though I know we've done this before uh, with these Sabre 28s. But uh, you've got a uh, length overall of uh, 28.4, length along the water at uh, nearly 23. 
and beam of uh, nine, just over nine feet, fiberglass construction. I think it's a core deck on these, but I'll find out. 320 of these were built, and uh, it does not have a Volvo. It, it has the uh, Yanmar in there. But cellular displacement is of around 16. Um, heavy displacement of two, uh, 296. Comfort ratio of 26. So you're getting up there close to that sweet spot of 30. Capsizing screening of under 2, which is great, and an uh, S-slash speed factor of 1.7. Uh, solid little boats, fun little boats. You can't go wrong with a Sabre 28, especially if you're breaking in and want a low barrier to entry. This is a great boat. Take a close look at it. $5,000, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right, ladies and gents. Coming up at number four this week is another Pearson. This is a 1980 Pearson 30. List price of $7,000. Uh, listed a day ago in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, it's at Great Bay Marine in Newington, New Hampshire. And it's listed at $7,000 because it needs a little work. It needs a new cutlass bearing, which is not the end of the world. Um, it is something that can be done uh, at not great expense. And it does uh, have a couple of leaks noted from all the rain we've had. But uh, the interior is exceptionally neat, clean, and updated. And the list of new things on this is out of control. Uh, I've got a, bat, a new batteries as of 2023, new marine toilet of 20, as of 23, uh, new tiller pilot as of 23, um, inverter as of 23, uh, induction cooktop as of 23, new rudder bearings as of 23, new teak ladder treads 23, uh, solar as of 21, uh, GPS and AIS receiver as of 21, rewired mast. Uh, and there's just too much to go through here, but uh, it's got 11 horsepower universal diesel engine uh, and the heat exchanger and raw water impeller were replaced in 2021. I know all about the raw water pump impeller. I just did that uh, on our boat and it's got a Edson wheel and 150% Genoa and main are in good shape for their age. Still very cruisable, but you won't be winning any races. And you've got 110% Genoa, which has seen very little use. I would put that 110 on there in a hurry. Uh, so look, um, it's got a couple things that need to be done, but these Pearson 30s are great. Now look how neat this thing is. The, it looks like all the interior cushions have been redone at some point. Um, the head looks great. And like I said, it's got a new uh, marine toilet right there. And uh, it looks neat as a pin and it's been well kept and loved. And uh, there's your stern hung ladder with new teak treads. And uh, there it is on the transporter truck. These boats, I'm telling you, are fast, they're fun, they're easy to sail. And there's one uh, more next to us here in Camden, and I took some footage, which I'll show you here, so you can see what it actually looks like on the water. And while we're doing that, we're gonna flip over to the sailboat data on this. Uh, a thousand of these were built, so clearly a very, very popular boat. Uh, length overall of 29 feet, length on the water of 25, uh, beam of nine and a half, um, balsa cord decks, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, it is not a gas engine on this. It is a diesel per the description, uh, and it's got a sailor displacement of 17.4. Uh, it's a moderate displacement at 237, comfort ratio of nearly 25, just, well, just over 24, capsizing screening of under two, and an S-factor, speed factor of 2.34. So relative to like-sized boats, this thing is going to blaze fast boats. Fast, reasonably comfortable, uh, and slick boats. And a 1,000 of these were made, so there's going to be a great support network out there on the WWW. So you'll be able to find out about the cutlass bearing and the best practices of replacing that. Uh, and... Uh, you know, that is uh, down here on your prop. So I think, uh, you know, you uh, could get this for a deal, maybe even get it for less than $7,000 uh, and because of things that need to be done. But check it out. Uh, if you're in the New Hampshire area, uh, this thing is sweet. It's a lovely boat and there are a ton of them around. So you'll, you will be in good company. All right, ladies and gents, coming in at number three this week, uh, is a 1971 Douglas 32 list price of $7,900. Uh, just had a price drop back on September 9th of $1,000 located in Mattapoise, Massachusetts. Uh, this is a cool little boat. I love this primarily because I can tell just by looking at it that it's a Ted Brewer design. And wait, sure enough, classic Ted Brewer design. Yep, uh, it kind of looks like the Morgan 30 or 32. Um, Lazy Jacks, Roller Furling, Dodger, that all looks to be in good shape. Um, nice uh, full keel on her and, uh, you know, a keel hung rudder, protected prop. Uh, nice uh, transom here with a ladder. I love 
the looks of this boat. Uh, it needs a little love and attention, but it's noted to be in uh, good condition and you've got nice pedestal steering, wheel steering there. There's your Danforth anchor. The down below, it's it's taken apart for the season, so you've got your boom down here and, and battens. You've got a full batten main, clearly. Uh, but your settees look to be in nice shape, and um, I believe there's a little galley in here somewhere. There's your little cooktop there. There's your sink that's nearly center line, and nice sole floor that looks like it could be brought back a little bit. The head looks great. I, I really... This boat is charming, and, and if I'm reading this right, it looks like it's, the engine's got 94 hours on it, but who knows? We'd have to verify that, but it looks like it has more than that based on what I'm seeing, but maybe it was rebuilt, and those are the rebuilt hours, uh, but um, what kind of engine is that? It looks like a Westerbeek, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here. Um, uh, the boat sails well and surprises both with, most with a good turn of speed as well as windward ability. Current owners have had her since 2008, and they purchased her from the original owner. So two owners since this boat was built in 1971. Over the years, rigging, sails, power, and electronics have been updated. Um, I'm wondering if we can get other details. Get out of here. Beat it. Uh, other details. Yes. Standing room, blah, blah, blah. Garmin 545 chart plotter. That's nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's a four-cylinder four cylinder Westerbeek diesel engine. I love it. Uh, and you've got a Doyle uh, main that's full batten. You've got a 150% Genoa that's approximately 15 years old. Very good service, serviceable condition. Uh, standing rigging was replaced in 2010 and 2011. Harkin Furler in 2010 and Dodger in 2016. That's nice. Okay, so this is a really slick boat. And I just want to go back to the pictures because I'm kind of in love with this thing. Um, these are built in Canada, by the way, the Douglas boats. But a Ted Brewer design. Uh, a nice, solid, uh, sweet, sweet looking boat. And for $7,900, you could be on a 32 foot boat. You could be cruising anywhere right now. You could take this down to the islands. You could sail down to Florida for the winter, whatever. Just coastal cruise. What a cool looking boat. So let's look at the sailboat data. Okay. Um, nice shear on her, by the way. Uh, there's your full keel, your schematics. One, two, three, four. It looks like she'll sleep four. I can't tell if there is a quarter berth on her or not, but. Uh, in any event, um, made of fiberglass, uh, Ted Brewer design, Douglas Marine, Canada. She, uh, length overall 32, uh, length along the water of 24 and a half, um, and a beam of almost 10 feet at nine and a half. Fairly narrow. Sail area displacement of uh, nearly 15. Uh, heavy displacement at 349. Comfort ratio of over 33. You're looking for a comfortable boat on this list? This is the one. Capsizing screening of under two at 1.69 and an S slash speed factor of 1.24. So relative to like size boats, not the quickest, even though they say she's pretty fast. So I love this boat. Um, I am all for it. And for that price, uh, you can't go wrong, especially for a 32 foot boat. Are you kidding me? I love it. All right, coming in at number two, we're getting there, we're close to number one, is a 1971 Tallman Yacht Mementia 24-footer, list price of $5,500, just had a price drop back on 9-11 of $1,250, and located in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Now, I cannot find out a lot about this boat, other than I love the looks of her. This is going to be a classic day sailor, maybe an overnighter, but you've got lazy jacks, you've got a... Uh, a jib on a boom, self-tacking boom. I love that. And it's a really pretty boat. So let's just look at the pictures. I love this. Look at this thing. It's got classic lines uh, from stem to stern. And uh, if you want a day sailor or maybe an overnighter, this boat would be really cool. And the down below just looks lovely. I love all the wood. Um, and it looks like you could sleep one or two back there and then a couple up in the V-berth. You got wheel steering on this and a nice big cockpit for hanging out and having your sundowner in. And I love everything. It looks like it's a, a deck step mast and uh, it's got an internal uh, diesel engine and a centerboard. And uh, it looks like it comes with maybe this uh, enclosure for wintering the boat and the, the accents of bright work and it's just, it's just, it's a stunner. It's a stunner of a boat. And if I had to have a day sailor, this would be the one I want. So what do we know about this? Um, she's in excellent shape and sails well in all conditions. She has a shallow, dra a shallow draft of two and a half feet uh, with the centerboard up. Uh, built by Tallman Yacht 
company designed by Robert Baker. She, was a, she has the beauty, warmth, and elegance of a classic wood yacht with her graceful lines and distinctive rig. She stands out in any harbor. Sails are in excellent condition, as is the spruce mass and spars. So you've got uh, wooden spars, which is not the end of the world. Those are great. You might just have to varnish them every now. You've got a Volvo diesel. Wow. High quality, large cockpit, and below deck cushions. There is no trailer uh, with the boat. The boat is in excellent condition and deserves a good home. Okay, so no trailer, uh, but... Um, just a real stunner. And the only thing I can find about um, uh, RH or Robert Baker uh, was that this thing was designed in 1968. And um, Robert Baker is no longer with us. Uh, so it's hard to find information. There's nothing on sailboat data about this boat. But if anyone knows anything more about this boat, I would love to hear it. Um, so please put any comments down below and share what you know with these boats for our viewers. But this is really a pretty boat and she is number two this week just because she is such a stunner. Okay, drum roll. Get on the drums. Coming in at number one this week is a 1968, whoops, Seafarer 31, list price of $5,000, located down in Brantford, Connecticut. Uh, posted about uh, three weeks ago. This boat for the price is outrageous, okay? Uh, she is the model Fastnet 31, okay? Uh, and noted to be in good condition, engine hours of only 1,600. Noted to be one of the nicest Seafarer 31s around. She is the 1968 Seafarer 31 Mark I Fastnet standard sloop designed by Bill Tripp. The boat is ready for coastal cruising. Numerous upgrades done but to uh, professional standards. You've got uh, hood main, full battens, uh, and uh, three reef points. You've got 140% Genoa on a, a Schaefer uh, 1000 fur, uh, furler. And you've got a drifter reacher and a flasher, spinnaker pole, heavy duty standing rigging. You've got a 1991 Westerbeek uh, diesel that was well maintained and runs like a charm. And you got a max prop on here wheel steering, Dodger, Sea Hood, Auto Helm 3000, Galley, and interior updated. You got a 25 pound CQR, uh, 22 pound Fortress Storm Anchor, and a 12 um, pound Danforth anchor, winter frame and cover. Owner is selling for health reasons, is looking for someone to care for her and use her. The boat needs some teak cleaning and deck paint touching up. Okay, so she might need a little work, but I love the freaking lines on this boat. The, sh uh, the shear on this is beautiful. Here's your uh, wheel steering and roller furling um, and just beautiful lines. I love the uh, coach roof on this, the lines on that coach roof. And it looks like the hull might be original gel coat, gel coat that needs some love, but an Look at this Dodger. That's a nice Dodger. Nice sail cover. Everything about this is nice. And nice wheel and uh, binnacle. Auto helm. Uh, you got the auto helm uh, 5,000 or 3,000, I think it is. Here's your uh, main sheet and traveler, which is behind you, which is nice if you're going to solo this thing. Uh, no self-tailing winches, but uh, your primaries are right there. Nice big cockpit, high combing boards, and really a pretty boat the down below is very neat and tidy it's interesting that the galley is forward here's your uh, cooktop sink and uh, your settee cushions all look new as do your v-birth cushions it looks like uh, you might have pressurized water plus a foot pump or maybe just a foot pump but all these cushions look great there is your uh, diesel and there's your head there's your sail collection there she is on the hard with a um, you know, a nice fuller keel with a brewer bite here and a uh, skeg hung rudder. And I just love the looks of this boat. And this sort of powder gray blue with the white uh, coach roof and cabin top is just really stunning. And look, for that price, for the price of $5,000 uh, with a Westerbeek diesel, I mean, what the heck? You can take this boat anywhere. Uh, and it's noted to be in good condition. The engine hours are only 1,600, so a lot of life left in that. So let's look at the sailboat data. This is not the yawl version. It is the sloop version. Look at the shear. Here's your keel. Uh, I love this. I love this build trip design. Um, and let's see what we got here. Length overall is 31. Length along the water is 22. So you got about a, a nine-foot differential there. So nice overhangs. Uh, beam of almost nine feet. So she's narrow. Um, displacement of 8,700 pounds. Max draft of four and a half feet. And uh, solid hull with balsa cord deck. 
and uh, made by Seafarer Fiberglass Yachts. Built trip design, as we, as we said. It's got a diesel, not an atomic Ford gas. It's got a Western Beak diesel. Uh, sailor area displacement of nearly 16. Uh, um, she has a heavy displacement at 350. Comfort ratio of nearly 30, so 29.74. So very comfortable boat in most sea states. Capsizing screening of under 2 uh, at 1.7 and an S slash speed factor of 1.32. So... Uh, not the quickest boat relative to like size boats. Who cares? You're going cruising. Okay, I love this boat. So uh, I, I can't say enough about the looks of this boat. Uh, it is hot, hot, hot. She is a beautiful boat. She is a stunner. Uh, and for that price point, she is number one this week. Go take a look. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.